let's discuss the 10 layers in the tip. John Mack has a well-known quote that says, quote, there's a whole universe in the tip, unquote. For me, I like to think of it more like planets, maybe. Or rather, I name it 10 layers in the tip. We've discussed four of these strokes to create some of those layers already. We discussed the basic tip stroke, gather, gather, push, swing, pivot, and thunk. In this video, let's discover the remaining six strokes. How about a hug? Well, the reed likes a hug. So insert your plaque. The hug stroke takes place on the very outer edge of the tip. Straight up from the inception, going straight up the reed. The very, very side. Here also, this is when it's very good to use your plaque as the guard rail. You notice? So you run right up the side from the inception, right up that very, very edge. It's called hug because when you actually do that, you can see that the tip starts hugging. See that on the sides here? It starts hugging or holding on to the plaque. The next stroke, good to discuss, is corners. So the corners is basically a tiny little basic stroke. It's just way up here in the corner. So knife is angled, 100% wrist, and you scrape just the corners. Now all these strokes are refinements, so you notice I no longer have huge curls of cane coming off like before, but small little bits because the 10 layers is a form of refining or finishing the tip. Next, let's discuss the bevel. The bevel is a stroke used directly off the end of the reed. Now, some of us have been told never to do that. However, I'm not actually scraping off the end. What I'm doing is setting the knife on the end, right here, on the very, very edge, and just rotating onto the plaque. So I'm actually beveling the edge. I'm not removing cane back toward it. I'm simply rolling off the edge of a square cut. Okay? Very, very d detailed, sophisticated little stroke that removes very little cane, but makes a big difference in smoothness of the attack. Now, there are, after you've done several of these, there's a really nice stroke, and actually I didn't do the other side, so I better remind you. Hug, hug, corners, corners, and a bevel. The reason I have to do this is the next check. Remember, normally I use the lug nut theory and I rotate all four quadrants. Okay, now, the next check is going to be what I call the bubble. What you do is you lick the reed on the black. Sorry, excuse me. And then you bring it back and now you press very gently because you don't want to create loose sides. Up and see how that creates a bubble right there of water. So that bubble, you want to be very symmetrical. As you look at this one right here, I think this side is coming back a little later. Watch. See? So I'm going to go in and scrape a tiny bit in that area. Probably the corner is impeding it more than the hug. And maybe a little of the bevel on that side. So let's see. i do that. Now press again. And it got more symmetrical. In fact, I did a little too much, so now i got to go to the other side. So you play around with this until you get it absolutely symmetrical. It's amazing how smooth it will make your reed function. Next we have a stroke called the right angle. Right angle is reserved for when you fail a particular plane check on the reed, and that will be discussed soon, the plane checks. 
and uh, what to do when it fails. But the right angle is the only stroke where we break the training wheel rule. So on this side, you use the very corner of the knife. You set it up perpendicular, I'm sorry, <laughs> parallel to the tip, right on the edge. Kind of start at the inception and work straight up. It's a very strong stroke, one or two strokes. Then you go to the butt of the knife, the literal corner here, and put it at the same location on the other side and scrape straight up. That's called right angle. It does amazing things to center the tone of a reed and helps pass the check that would have failed, causing you to need to do that. And the final stroke, always in a reed, for me, finishing a reed, finishing as in refining or polishing, is the stuffing stroke. That's set up similar to the pivot stroke, where you start at the inception with the blade and then you angle the blade such that it does not cross over the center, but instead just avoid center. And in the pivot, you remember we scraped and kind of steered and pivoted. Here, we're going to set it up, avoid slightly the center, and then scrape straight off, and I call it like a snow plow. I'm not rotating wrist, I'm not changing knife, I'm just scraping straight off. Very few strokes. You do the same thing on the other side, set up at the inception, and avoid the center, keep it uh, stationary except you snow plow off the corner.